Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome back. In this episode, work continues on the Harrisoff Eagle. As always, a big shout out and thanks to all the folks up at Total Boat and Jamestown Distributors for their sponsorship of this project. A couple of big and important things to cover in this episode. First is going to be routing out spider cracks and voids and things like that, like these, and getting them filled in with fairing compound along with major areas like this where I found issues with the chain plates. That's going to take a little bit more work. And I'm going to be taking the bowsprit off. I want to try and protect it from some of the work I'm going to be doing and keep it from getting dinged up and it'll be easier to restore inside in the winter. Plus it's just going to make some repair tasks a little bit easier to have it out of the way. Now just a quick note before we get started. It's March 21st as I'm editing all of this and getting ready to send it up to YouTube. And that means we've all been through at least about a week of all of this craziness. And I'm certainly hoping uh, that everybody out there is okay. And we're all hoping that it doesn't last any longer than it absolutely has to. And I'm hoping that uh, with a little extra time I can work on the boat, work on these videos and get them up a little sooner. Uh, which I hope will be both instructional and a little bit entertaining for you while we're all waiting out this storm. So take care. I hope everybody's doing well and uh, let's get on with the project. The bowsprit on these boats is a solid piece of teak with another smaller support piece underneath, which is where the little figurehead of the Harrisoff Eagle is mounted. In order to get the bowsprit off, I'm going to have to get to some bolts that are covered over by plugs. One of the bolts already has its plug popped off and I can clearly see it's some sort of carriage bolt and it's iron. That's not going to do any favors. I'm still not sure how the smaller piece of wood under the bowsprit is secured to it, but I am seeing three screw holes here that are covered over with plugs so I'm presuming that's what's holding it on. I take out plugs like this with a special chisel that I made that's got a little bit of an angle on it. Once I dig down in there, it allows me to pry it open like a little miniature crowbar, and it does so without doing a whole lot of damage to the surrounding wood. It's just able to get into some places that otherwise, with straight tools, are a little harder to get to. And I can clearly see this one is made of iron as well. Definitely not the material you want to be using to adhere anything on a boat to anything. This is where my practice of yoga comes in handy, because the only way to get to the nuts for these bolts is to crawl through the very small opening in the front of the cabin on your back with the bottom edge of the bulkhead stabbing you right in the middle of the shoulder blades. Just to let you know, it's not as much fun as it looks. Now most of the nuts that are holding the cleats onto the top aren't any big deal. I can get those off fairly easy. But the nuts holding those great big carriage bolts on there are rusted and they're square. That's going to be an interesting challenge. Sorry about this being out of focus. And as I thought, these fasteners came off relatively easily. Once the nuts came off, I just used a bit and brace on the screws and they came right out. Although they are a little bit brittle, so a lot of them I think I'm going to have to probably replace. Put all the parts in a Ziploc bag, mark them where they go, and that'll be a nice winter project for cleanup. Now through the magic of editing, it probably looks like this didn't take very long to do. But in reality, it took all day and an entire bottle of Icy Hot later that night to get this bowsprit off of there. Once I got the bolts out though and loosened up some of the decomposed sealant underneath, it came off relatively easily. Definitely lots of cleanup to do there. But it's off in storage and it's a nice project I can work on in the winter to clean it up, get it sanded down really nice, put some nice coats of finish on it, and it'll keep the rather fragile eagle figurehead protected and safe until I can clean it off and get it repainted and restore it as well. And if I haven't emphasized this before, here's what I think of using ferrous base iron on boats. Don't do it. Ever. Okay, so now it's time to get into routing out some of the uh, spider cracks and voids and all that fun stuff. Now for most of this work, a Dremel is going to be my go-to tool. 
These long, narrow grinding stones do a great job. They can get into tight spaces and do a great job with things like the spider cracks. I've also found that both for routing out and for finishing, these little sandpaper flapper discs do a great job too. They can get into areas where a regular sander can't. And I get an awful lot of use out of this bullet shaped grinding stone as well. Now for working in other areas, especially around where I'm going to be working on the chain plates, I'm going to need some other tools like a belt sander. Can't go without one of those. Also going to need a regular orbital sander. This is going to be important for sanding off and cleaning the areas around the holes where we're going to put the fairing compound and more and more I'm using these mesh screens to do the sanding. They last a lot longer and they do a fantastic job. I've never really had good luck with these kind of detail sanders but I did find one from Ryobi that seems to do a really nice job for me. So this is one I would recommend. Now you may have seen some special purpose sanders like these Makita long nose belt sanders. They even make a smaller one here, and they are without question great tools. Makita makes really good stuff. With the amount of work I do though, unfortunately, I just can't justify the cost. They're worth it, but I just don't do that much. But they would come in useful. As such, I did find, yeah, I know, you know it's coming, a Harbor Freight version of that same type of sander. Is it the same quality tool that you're gonna get with Makita? No, but for the volume of work that I do, it'll do just fine. And like I said, I got it from Harbor Freight for about 40 bucks. So if you can't swing the Wellworth Makita tool, it's Harbor Freight to the rescue. I'm gonna start out routing out these small spider cracks that are really common around areas like this along the scuppers along this Harrisoff Eagle. But I am kind of concerned that this stone is gonna get too close to the teak bump rail. So I came up with just a real simple solution. I found just a piece of real thin aluminum flashing, put a 90 degree bend on it, and I can stick it right down between the edge of the tow rail and the bump rail. And hopefully that'll protect it from any damage. So I'm gonna start out by drawing it backwards, pulling it along just real thin along the crack to route it out and you don't have to dig down and get the whole thing done in one swipe. Take it easy, take it one little pass at a time. Once you begin to route out kind of a guide groove, it'll follow along a lot easier each time. So just take it easy, go slow, and always wear a dust mask while doing this. Afterwards you can push it once in a while to start to get down into some deeper voids. I tend to go down a little bit further than where the gel coat is down into the fiberglass. So after finishing that up, I pulled the metal off and my bump rail still looks fine. There were a few places where the metal really wouldn't fit down easily and I didn't want to force it, so I just held it on there into the crease and it did the same job. But I highly recommend doing something like this when you have fiberglass and gel coat that come up against wood that you don't want to take off. It'll help protect it and keep it from getting dinged up. Now the area around the chain plates took a little bit more, so I'm going to my larger grinding stone for this. After having dug down into this, I started seeing that this was way more of a problem than just a spider crack. But even if you don't have the problem that I did, you definitely want to go down through the gel coat and a little bit into the fiberglass. If you see the crack opens up even more, goes deeper, keep going down a little bit until you can get some decent fiberglass to grab onto. With areas like this where the old navigation lights were, I'm going to start to work into the hole, open it up a little bit, and then start to move it around at an angle to try and open the hole up, starting to make a tapered hole, kind of like a morning glory or maybe the bell on a trumpet. This will give the fairing compound a lot better surface to bond to rather than just a straight hole, and it'll keep it from ever popping out. This is on the stern where one of the ends of the traveler went through the deck. I'm going to start off by just routing out around it, and then gradually I'll start working into the hole and smoothing it out again, kind of like a trumpet shape. And for this one, I'm going to open it up just a little bit wider than it was. As I do so, I notice that I'm starting to run into voids in there and it looks like the core probably is rotted along this a little bit, which doesn't really surprise me. So we're going to have to take care of that a little later too but I still want to have that shape of kind of a morning glory 
for the best bonding possible for the fairing compound and whatever else I need to do in this area. After that, it's time to get the random orbital sander out and start to sand off the area around where the patch is going to go. Again, this helps for adhesion for the fairing compound. You want to make it nice and clean, and you can see how sanding it off is going to give an even better surface area for the bonding agent. Now this is where some of these specialty sanders can really come in handy. I'll still use the random orbital sander to get some of the general area, but some of these specialized sanders can get into radii and other areas that are just too difficult for any other kind of sander. Now with any kind of belt sander, even a small one like this, you have to be careful because they do take off an enormous amount of material very quickly. So just go light and take your time. Just very gently flare out these routed out areas to better handle the fairing compound. And again you want to make sure the area where the patch is going is clean as well. So I always take the random orbital sander and sand down the area around the patch a little bit. Now for bigger jobs like the cockpit sole which had just a ton of holes in it, that was easier taking care of with the belt sander. And I mentioned before that I like to use an air compressor to blow out these cracks rather than using a vacuum. The reason is the air will blow out dust that is going to make the fairing compound not stick well to the surface that a vacuum just otherwise doesn't always get. And I can see I have a little bit more work for me as trying to blow out the area where the traveler goes into the back of the deck. I'm seeing dirty water coming out there from where the core is rotted away. So I'm not going to fill that in and just leave it open to dry for a while. The areas around the chain plates took a lot more work. I was going to be completely filling those in anyway, but in order to get around all of the damaged core and even a lot of fiberglass, I had to route these holes out a lot wider, a lot deeper and I had to sand off the areas around them a lot wider just to make sure that they were clean enough for the work I was going to do on them. Went back then to using my Dremel tool to get some more detail out of there, find some decent fiberglass if I possibly could. And again, using the air compressor to really clean things out and get an idea of what's going on in there. Now there are plenty of jobs I still use acetone for, but I found for really cleaning up these fiberglass and gel coat surfaces to get them ready for fairing compound or fiberglass work, this Total Boat Dewaxer and Surface Prep really does a great job. It doesn't have the flash point that acetone does. This product still cleans the fiberglass, but keeps it still rough enough for anything like fiberglass or fairing compound to better bond to. I really like it. And now I'm going back to one of my all-time favorite products that Total Boat makes, the Total Fair Fairing Compound. It couldn't be easier to use. You just mix equal parts of the blue hardener with the yellow resin. Again, just one part of the hardener. and the same amount of the resin and just begin to work it in with a putty knife mix it up nice until there are no blue streaks or yellow streaks that it's all one homogeneous color a nice heath kit green all my ham radio friends will understand that reference and then just begin to trowel it into the areas that you need it I'll put a little bit in first press it in and then go back several times pressing it in scraping it off press it in again just to make sure I get all the bubbles out, all the voids taken care of. On a relatively flat surface like this, I'll tend to work in several layers, scraping it off, pushing it back in, and leave just a little bit extra on there, and then come back and sand it off later. One of the reasons I like this product so much is that every other fairing compound I've ever used ends up curing leaving these little pinholes. I think they're just bubbles that come to the surface. That has never happened with this product. Now with areas like this that are a little bit more complex, I tend to put a little bit more on and just leave it there. I'm not trying to get the final sculpted surface in a single application. That's just not going to happen. And I want to put enough on there so that I can come back later with some tools like the uh, little belt sander or my Dremel or whatever and start to sculpt it into what I need. 
Chances are I'll need to add some more ferrin compound to really get what I want, but it's worth it. So don't be stingy, put enough on there. It's not gonna look great as soon as you're done with it. Let it cure and come back and start to do the sanding that you need with whatever tools you can get a hold of. And you can put any particular structure that you have to rebuild like this back exactly the way that it was. Once you prime it and paint it, you'll never know there was fairing compound there. It works that seamlessly with the existing materials on the boat. Random orbital sanders work great on relatively flat surfaces like this. For some of these holes that were in the deck, all I did was go through and sand them off and they were ready to go the first try. Again, back with that little sanding wheel on my Dremel, I was able to get into some tight areas that has some radii on them like the tow rail and really start to craft it the way that I wanted it. Now there were a couple little areas, little divots, little cracks that I'll need to go back and reapply some fairing compound, but it'll be a lot less the second time. And with little detail tools like this, you can really get in there to craft it and sculpt it and really restore it to the way it used to be. Now the chain plate areas were going to require a little bit more involved work and in several steps, so I'm going to cover that in more detail in the next video. Well that'll about do it for this episode. I'll be back with another one as soon as I possibly can. Remember in the show notes there's a discount code for Total Boat and Jamestown Distributors. Save a few bucks on your next DIY project. Everything's going to be fine. I've got my family. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's safe. I hope that's the same with you too. Even got the rum. Rum's good. Got everything I need. Everything's going to be fine. Remember, keep calm and work on your boat. <laughs>